name is Fred Newman. I'm the owner of the View Camera Store and Fred Newman Photography. And today I'd like to talk about view camera movements. We're going to talk about rise and fall. We're going to talk about shift. We're going to talk about tilt, both axis and base tilt. And we're going to talk about swing. Now remember, each camera has a different way of doing things. This camera has axis tilt in the front, base tilt in the back. Some cameras have base tilt in the front also. Some cameras have swing in the back. This one only has swing in the front. So you got to remember each camera is going to be individual. So we're going to work on this and then you can uh, get the ideas to work on your camera. The first move we're going to talk about is rise and fall. And the, this knob on this camera controls it. So basically you're going to go rise and fall. And I'll show you what it looks like in the ground glass after we show all the movements. So we've got rise and fall and you're going to adjust your composition. It's kind of like stepping on a ladder or stepping into a hole because you're either going up or down. And remember, everything here is parallel, so we're not going to work on worry about distortion for what we're going to do right now. So in other words, the camera is set up totally level so that the ground glass is totally perpendicular so there will be no distortion. So all your windows will be parallel like this and everything else. So we're not going to consider anything like that. The next movement I want to talk about is shift. So I'm just going to loosen this little lever here. Shift is when you're going left to right. It's another variation. In other words, when the camera's level, like everything is level here, I can either pan to the right or pan to the left. But if you like the shape of things and you don't want to twist it, then you might want to do a little bit of shifting left and right. And also, sometimes you're limited. You can't move over so you do have to do shifting to change your composition. So we'll show what it looks like in shifting. The next move we're going to talk about is tilt. On this camera there's access tilt in the front so it's basically right here and we're going to go through the procedures. The other tilt that we'll talk about is base tilt and that's from the back. The last move we're going to talk about is swing. Now basically it's similar to access tilt but it's in this direction and it's basically used a lot of times for like photographing buildings if you want this side and this side in focus just like you want near and far in focus. The near side of the building to the far side of the building. We're going to talk about that last. Now the first movement we're talking about is rise and fall and rise is just simply raising the lens up on the front standard and then lowering the lens on the front standard. And then you can adjust your composition depending whether you've got too much foreground or too much on the top. So if you're at the Grand Canyon you want to get more on the bottom just lower it all the way down or if you're photographing trees or something or buildings and there's too much foreground you just raise it up. And like all things you just want to go out in the backyard or some convenient place where you're not going to be disturbed and practice this. The next movement I want to talk about is shift. And the shift is just moving the front standard to the left or the right. And you see the effect it has on your composition. Sometimes you just need a little bit of a nudge, like there's a branch on the side and you want to get out of the composition. You could just either go one side or the other side. You can go either way. And it depends on the camera. Some have shift in the front, some have shift in the rear. This camera has shift on the rear, but you can see the effect on the ground glass. That's what's wonderful about working with view cameras. Everything's immediately seen on the ground glass. So let's center it again. We'll go on to the next movement. For access tilt, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the near and tilt to the far. We're going to do that three times. Focus on the near, tilt to the far. Focus on the near, tilt to the far. By the third time, we should see the top and bottom, the near and far, in focus. So I'm going to do it one step at a time, and then you'll get to see how it works. I focused on the near. Now I'm going to tilt to the far. My head getting away, getting away for a second. And now I'm going to refocus on the near. And I'm going to re-tilt to the far. Refocus on the near. Re-tilt to the far. And you can see the near and the far are now in focus. 
So it just takes a little practice. You want to keep the knobs just tight enough so that nothing moves around too much. So right now we've got the near in focus and the far in focus. And if you're finding the middle is not in focus, what you're going to do is stop down the lens. So that should, and it's just going to be practice. I do have a sheet that I um, can get a PDF for, and I'll talk about that later. But basically, remember, it's focus on the near, tilt to the far, do it three times, and that's your axis tilt, and just practice it until it's second nature. Now we just covered axis tilt. Axis tilt is when you want to keep everything parallel. Now don't forget when you're doing base tilt, what's going to happen, especially in the rear, you're moving the base away and the image in the foreground is going to get slightly bigger. So when you have nothing to worry about being parallel, what you do is you, you can use the base tilt. So let's do that. And that's the opposite. We're going to focus on the far and tilt to the near. So let me focus on the far. Now I'm going to tilt to the near. And refocus on the far. Retilt to the near. And it looks like everything is in focus right now. And as I say, you're going to focus on the far, tilt to the near, do it a few times, usually three times will do it. And then if you're finding the middle of the ground glass is out of focus, stop down the lens until you see it. With this, you could work at much wider apertures than normal with a view camera. One important thing to remember is, remember each lens has a, a different circle, image circle on it. So when you're doing rise and fall, you may be, go beyond the capabilities of the lens. So what I recommend doing is, let me just turn it this way, is when you're at extreme rise and fall, you want to look through the lens and look for the corners of the ground glass. I find that easier looking than the other way. So you're going to look, look for each corner. If you can see them, it's okay, but as you start to see the corner being cut off, you're going to get vignetting of your image. So when you're doing rise and fall, and this is especially important when you're doing cameras bigger than 4 by 5 you want to look in all the corners, all four corners to be sure, because if I push this all the way up, this lens looks like it just about covers, so I'm okay. But depending on the coverage of the lens, you might miss part of your image. And then when you get back in the darkroom and you process your film, you're going to be kind of disappointed. So a good idea to do is before you, you're done, before you take your picture, take a quick look. Look at all four corners. If you can see them, you're good, ready to go. One of the best instructions that I use when teaching, like I just explained now, I met a gentleman named name of Tom McCartney um, probably about 20 years ago. And he gave me a set of instructions on camera movements. It's the best set of instructions. It's real simple. It's just five pages. And it goes through all the movements that I talked about. But the best suggestion, I could send you a PDF of this. Just drop me an email, no problem. I'm glad to send you one. But the best thing to do is just practice these. I mean, it's everyone thinks, oh my God, this is so hard. But it's just a little bit of practice, and you'll be doing as good as anybody else. I remember long ago showing someone how to use a camera, and they go, you're so fast. It's, no, I just had more practice. So you could do the same as me, or maybe even faster, but it's just... Practice, 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 like they say. Same with musicians, but with us photographers, we need to do the same thing. Thank you for watching. Any help you need, please email me. Thank you again.